Hey everybody, welcome back to Maker's Playground. So at Maker's Playground, we move a ton of material. Lots of material, lots of different kinds. We move plastic, plywood, sometimes stone, steel, appliances, cabinets. We move a lot of stuff here. And until recently, we did it like everybody else did, with our hands. Now, that can kind of lead to some issues. You know, just moving plywood and plastics and things around with, with just your meat paws can lead to some crazy things. <laughs> Now, a couple weeks ago, I was on Instagram, just surfing around, looking at Instagram stuff, and I came across this tool that has completely changed the way we move material. When I saw this thing, I was like, this tool is absolutely incredible, and now this is how we move material. So the tool's called the Grabo, and when I first saw this thing, I had to have it, so I bought, I bought three of them. And when I got them in my hands and realized these things are built like freaking tanks, I mean, we threw this thing off a roof, testing a cabinet for another video. And it just blew my mind at the potential for all the things that you could do with this tool, not just moving material, but also things that we could do in our shops. And that is what today's video is about. So before we get started with today's video, I do want to mention this is not in any way sponsored. They are not paying me to do show you all this stuff. But I'm absolutely in love with this tool. And when I got a couple of them and found out that it was built so well, I started thinking of all kinds of fun stuff. One of the first things I did is think about how we attach things to dollies or hand trucks. In this case, this is a Jeep Harbor Freight one that we've had around here for a long time. Now normally to move something big and awkward like this, you'd want to strap it down. In this case, The gravel grabs right onto it. I've got a little add-on here that grabs right onto the dolly. And now this thing is not coming off. So as far as holding power goes, it holds really well. In fact, we hauled a large refrigerator up a flight of stairs with it the other day. And it worked absolutely amazing. So this is just one little add-on that we've put added to the grabo here to make it more useful around our shop. So if you guys do any vacuum forming or are interested in doing vacuum forming, you've probably seen one of these. This is a 3CFM two-stage vacuum that actually sucks the atmosphere out of like plastic bags if you want to do some uh, bent lamination or if you're trying to vacuum bubbles out of an epoxy. You'd use something like this. Now this runs right around 159 I think from like Harbor Freight and it's loud and it, it, there's oil and it's just a bad experience and the one time at bad camp. So this is one of the first things I thought about how can I replace this with this other tool and this is what we came up with. So with this simple plate, all I have to do now is just plug it in, set the grabo on top of it, put a little down pressure here, and I've effectively replaced this. So you may be asking, well, how long can this go? Well, this has a 14.8 volt lithium ion battery and it can run for 90 minutes straight before you need to replace the battery. It does come with two batteries and they are rechargeable. So I don't need this anymore. And for all of you who are interested in vacuum forming, I'm going to let you guys in on a little trade secret. Uh, a nice vacuum form this size is going to run right around $80 to $100, or the plastic for it. You get 16 of these for, I don't know, $34 off Amazon. Now the trick with these is, when you do a vacuum form, you put a piece of plastic on top of it, like a 6 mil folded over, and then you do your vacuum form, and this works great. I need a, Brad, I need your shirt. So the way a vacuum bag works is pretty simple, and I'm sure most of you understand it. You put, a, you put something in the vacuum bag, and then you remove the air from it. Hey Brad, can you help me? My hand is sore. <laughs>
So you can actually do vacuum forming that way with the pump and all that stuff. Now it's, it's not the best option, but you can. And, and who really wants to pump all day long? I mean, that's why you need a Brad. Sorry, Brad. So anyway, I want to show you actually using this set up for vacuum forming some wood. Now I just cut out some little pieces here. They're slightly over an eighth inch. So in woodworkers terms, an eighth inch and machinist terms, you're fired. That's like three thousands out. So we could probably cut that. <laughs> anyway, I'm, I'm not going to get fancy pants with this. I'm just going to do a quick demo. So let's spooge some glue on here. And when I use these vacuum bags like this, I'm going to use this right here is some six mil white plastic. And I'm just using that to protect the vacuum bag itself so I can use it again down the road. So I've got um, my little vacuum form, see, woohoo, and some three strips of one eight, little over an eighth inch pine. I'm gonna put them in my bag. Now, honestly, you'd wanna tape this off, make sure it's all gonna stay in place. Now, ideally, unless you're having Brad pump the air out of the bag, you want to get as much air out of this as possible and seal it up. Now we've modified our little pumper. I'll just put a piece of plastic in the end of it and screwed in one of these fittings. I do want to mention these are not the best fittings for vacuum forming. They do leak a little bit. The better, these are cheap ones, better quality ones would work better. So I'll come back and check this a couple of times and then if I need to, I can put more vacuum on it. But um, these bags work. So yeah, fun stuff. So I think you guys see where I'm going with this video. I just wanna show the versatility of it and all the different things that it can do. It can be used as a vacuum um, beyond what it's intended for, just to vacuum and lift things up. We've used it on the um, fork truck. And here's another idea that I think most of you will get a big kick out of. So this is not something that isn't already out there in the market. There is a vacuum system that you can put on your bench top and use for woodworking. Um, in this case, this is about 30 bucks worth of HDPE and a gravel. Um, and I want to show you how this works. So this simply sits in place and this is just a prototype I designed last night and cut out this morning. And that gets pinned right there. And then I can tighten it down by tightening this rod. And initially I wanted it to kind of come out here but this is what I had in my hardware kit. So first off, let me show you how I have this set up. So I've got this set up. So the grab was in this jaw, this tightens it all down. Now I've got these stop positions here and down here. So this keeps it vertical and this is supposed to keep it horizontal, but it's slightly off. I actually need to grind those down a little bit. In this case, I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it in the vertical position. So once I get that down, if I had the knob out here, I could just tighten it down. I wouldn't need the wrench. It doesn't take a lot and that is really in there. So now I can put material on here like a piece of plywood. Let's say I was edge banding. I can go right onto this if I turn it on first. And now I've got my plywood up here so I can do some edge banding on this top section. Now what I've got set up here is just a quick little release lever so I can turn this. I'm going to do the edge banding here edge bending here and then again just by taking this lever out and pushing it in so you can do the 45 right here which is you know i mean handy for some things and then move it back into a locked position and like we said before you can just loosen this up and put it on a flat position now thinking about that i don't honestly know what i would use it for in a flat position unless it was some kind of weird edging this is just a prototype now you will notice well, let me turn this back on is that there's some movement out here. Uh, there's, there's this long rod right here out of something soft like HDPE and it's half inch because that's what I had in the shop. I should have probably made it out of three quarter or one inch, which would have made this a lot more rigid. But when you're prototyping, you use what you got. So I thought it might be fun is to try some different materials. So we're gonna try some steel and some stone in this position as well. We'll start with, uh, do we know how much this weighs? I don't even know what kind of stone it is. It looks like marble, but I don't think it is. Ugh. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. 
So this is a quarter inch by quarter inch, uh, two foot or quarter inch, two foot by two foot steel plate. Um, weighs about 40 pounds. <laughs> Look, Bob, no hands. The bottom line is the Gravo is a very versatile tool. And I was so excited about seeing this and finding it. And when we got it and found out that this thing was built like a tank, has a great manufacturer's warranty, I wanted to be involved. So I got a hold of Gravo and said, hey, I make and sell my own tools. I've never done anybody else's, but I'm wondering if you'd be interested in giving me a dealership. And they did. So these are now available on my website. One of the things that we're gonna do for a limited time is send one of these. So when you buy a Gravo from us, we will send you one of these that we make right here. So I don't even know what to call this. I'm gonna call it the vacuum plate. It turns your Gravo into a vacuum that you can use on a vacuum chamber or for doing bent lamination. So we'll send one of these for free as well at no additional cost if you buy the Gravo. I just felt like I should say ShamWow right there, but hey, you know, this is what it is. Um, really appreciate you guys checking out today's video. Now, across the board, I've never seen in 30 years a tool that has more, the potential to be more effective in material handling across so many different trades. Um, whether it's installing cabinets or installing doors or HVAC or stonework or glasswork or the list goes on and on and on, especially in a wood shop where you use a CNC or you handle a lot of material. Now, there are, some, there are some caveats to this, and it won't pull a vacuum on anything that you can pull a vacuum through. So, MDF doesn't work. Coming up in the next few videos, we will do a complete video showing you all kinds of different materials you can and can't live with it, and what the holding capacities are of those different materials, because they do change. If a material's more porous, it won't hold as much weight as a material that's less porous. So I think that will make for some really good content. You can see that you'll be seeing that near in the future sometime soon. And um, <clears throat> yeah. Just want to say thank you guys so much for watching today. If you have questions about this, hit us up in the comments section below. Um, the next video coming up, we've got a pretty cool jig build for you guys. And I'm pretty excited about that one as well. So um, links in the description box for the Grabo if you're interested. There's also some other links where we got our vacuum chamber and vacuum bags and all that stuff. And we'll see you all in the next video.